Hi, my name is Kareem Benamar, and I'd like to discuss this notion of a homo creator with you. Now, I believe that the essence of human beings is to be creative, and creative in two respects. Creative that they come up with great new ideas, that they're always curious, that they always invent things, and creative in the sense that they actually create them, that they actually make them, that they build them in the world. And if you look at the history of civilization, the history of humanity, it is one long history of creation and of destruction. But let's focus on the creation. If you look around us, pretty much everything around us has been built. The physical environment, the buildings, the roads, the cars, all the objects, the myriad objects that we use every day, but also the logistical structures, the communication structures, the satellites, everything that keeps us going in terms of communication is stuff that we've built up. Everything that you can touch are things that we've built. So from a point of view of physical things, humans are incredible creators. And we've also built very artificial things like plastics, which we were very enthusiastic about it in the 1950s until they became a problem. We've built things such as graphene, which is a material made out of carbon, very, very thin layers of carbon, and which is going to be extremely light and extremely strong. Now, the second aspect in which we've been human creators is in a virtual sense. We've created systems like language. We've created systems like money, which is a social technology that we value things and we can trade with each other. We've created the arts, we've created belief system, we've created all kinds of justice and laws, all kinds of things that you can't touch, but which are also human creations. And sometimes they get represented by these big buildings with columns that tells you that there is an institution there, that it's a law court or a financial central bank or something like that. And the columns are the kind of physical proof that you're dealing with a kind of virtual system. So a question to you would be perhaps, what is a virtual system that we don't see? You know, it's, we, it's not, you can't touch it, it's intangible, but it's something that human beings have created, that they've invented, that they've come up with, and that they've actually made. Now, apart from the physical and the virtual things, there's a third element, and that is that we are creating ourselves. And so we create ourselves uh, through education, through our upbringing, through rules. We create ourselves through kind of physical activity or sports and sometimes perhaps through artificial means, through operations. And increasingly, we're starting to create ourselves at the level of DNA. So we can actually influence the kind of human beings that we are, the kind of physical beings that we are, and we can start playing with it. We can start determining our own evolution. And we might even be able to kind of deal with aging and beat aging so that we can become much, much older. So in a certain sense, the human beings are creating themselves as a kind of species, and they are starting to become their auto-creators of their own physical bodies. And that's a fairly recent development, but one that is very important. Now, what are the opportunities and the dangers in this creation, in the sense of human beings as homo creator? Now, first, there are two fairly strong things that have happened in the last few decades, which are very important. The first is that we've become much more powerful. We've managed to create things at the level of the world. Uh, so Michel Serre, the French philosopher, calls this world objects. And the first world object was the atom bomb. It's the, the, the bomb that has the capacity to obliterate the whole Earth. So we've now made an object that is the size of the planet. And those other ones, of course, the internet system is an object the size of the planet. The global financial system is a system the size of the planet. The global warming is something that is the size of the planet. In fact, we're now entering the age of the Anthropocene, which is the era, the geological era, in which human beings influence the world. So we're strong enough to influence the physical makeup of the planet. And so in terms of power, we've become incredibly powerful. The second one is that we've also become powerful on the level of the manipulating at the level of code. Uh, in, you know, in terms of agriculture, we've always crossed species and tried to make new species. But now we can do it by splicing genes. And that gives us a lot more power and a lot more capacity for creation. So I don't think it's a question of good or bad, but it's very important to realize that we've suddenly gotten these two huge boosts, one in terms of reach, in terms of power, the other in terms of operating at the level of code. And so what's very important is that we become aware of this creative aspect of human beings, that we realize that this is who we are in essence as human beings, but also that we become good at it that we in fact become good creators, that we realize how much power we have and that we create things uh, by thinking about them and with a certain kind of purpose and, and with a certain kind of consideration. Because at the moment you could say that we're really like an adolescent. You know, human beings are very powerful, 
uh, and at the same time, they're still very vulnerable. Okay, so we're powerful because we decide who lives. We can decide which animals survive and which animals don't survive. We want to save the whales, but we don't want to save certain viruses because they kill us. So we decide. Uh, we decide what the kind of temperature in the planet is going to be through our actions or our non-actions. Um, we can decide the, the direction in which cloning or in gene therapy is going to happen in the future. At the same time, we're still fairly vulnerable. I mean, the Earth is not that kind of weak. If you look at a, a major earthquake or a tsunami or a drought, uh, these things like that have a capacity to humble human beings and to destroy a lot of crea human creation. So we're vulnerable and powerful. And we behave like an adolescent. We behave like you know, these teenagers who have suddenly grown and they've become a lot more powerful and they've become a lot smarter. But they're still kids somehow. They still don't know how to deal with this power. And the interesting thing is, can human beings become more mature creators? Where there's still the joy of creating, there's still the joy of using this newfound power that you have to be a creator. But there's also the sense of kind of wisdom, which, what, what kind of creation that you want to make. Now, I don't really believe that ethical regulations and ethical rules will always help us because a lot of ethics tends to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't start cloning, uh, limit this, don't do that. But we know that things cannot be uninvented. Once we invented the atom bomb, we had to kind of deal with it. Once we invented gene therapy uh, and the DNA manipulation, we have to deal with it. Once we can change our evolution, we're going to have to decide what kind of direction our evolution is going into because we, we are not actually going to take that back. And so rather than to think of all these reasons not to do things, I would like to start thinking about what kind of world do we want to create? And I think it is our, perhaps our, it's our destiny to be homo creators, but it's also our responsibility. It's also what we will do. We are already de facto, we are already homo creators. So we better get used to it and better start enjoying it and better become good at it. And so, Individually, what is it that you create? What is it that you invent? And what is it that you make happen in the world? What is your own individual contribution? As a community, what is it that you make as a community, as a business, as an organization, as a country? What is it that you create in the world? And globally, as a human species, as this species that is a homo creator species, uh, more than a homo sapiens perhaps, what is it that we create? What kind of world are we creating as our human destiny? So we've always been inventors, we've always been creators. That's just the kind of strange ape that we are. But we've become a lot more powerful, so we better become good at being creators.